It's been about three years since my first grunge pedal board build and I've been meaning to redo it for a little while now with some newer pedals. So when Mono reached out to say, would you like to demo one of our new pedal boards in a video? I said, yes, please. <laughs> They were also kind enough to send over a couple of power supplies as well. So thank you very much indeed to Mono for their support and for sponsoring this video. Now I thought I'd briefly run through my thought processes around planning this pedal board build. So if you're planning to do one yourself, hopefully some of this advice will help you too. If you're already familiar with Mono cases, then you'll know that they're really high quality and the case for this pedal board is no exception. It's water resistant, has a generous cable pocket and the design allows you to sit the case upright. In the case, we have a padded strap we have some premium hook and strip Velcro for attaching your pedals to the board. And this slim and lightweight four rail board. Pretty cool. They come in three sizes, small, medium and large. I opted for the small, which is about 18 inches that way by, what's that? about 13 inches. And this brings me to my first piece of advice. When you're deciding on the size of a board, I would encourage you to allow for growth and get the size up from the one that you think you actually need. Because I've already started planning this out and I was thinking, should have probably gone for the medium. So here's some more questions that you should be asking yourself in the planning stages. First of all, ask yourself what the board is for. Is it for a specific type of music? Is it for a specific type of band? Is it for home use or is it for studio use or for taking on the road? Or does it need to cover you for a range of scenarios? In my case, it's obviously for a grunge board. So I wanna be able to cover bands like Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Foo Fighters, etc. The next question you should ask yourself is what size board do you need? For a gigging board, I think this is actually the perfect size, but for kind of home and studio use, I would have probably gone for a slightly larger board. One thing that's gonna determine this is the type of pedals that you have and the type of patch cables you have too. Some pedals have side mounted jacks like this one. Others have top mounted jacks like this one. Check this out. I've got two pedals here. They've got um, side mounted jacks and the jacks that I'm using um, are not the sort of low profile pancake type ones. They're the Planet Wave ones. Great cables and I've got quite a few of those so I might need to use some of those. Now if you add these same patch cables in to the other side of the pedals, the total space this is gonna take up just for two pedals is around about nine inches or like 23 centimeters, okay? Now check out these pedals. They all have top mounted jacks and top mounted power supplies. That's another thing you're gonna have to be aware of because some have top mounted jacks, but they have side mounted power supplies. So you might not be able to squeeze them in together as small as this. So I've actually got three pedals and they take up like seven and three quarter inches or about 20 centimeters, just under 20 centimeters. So if you take that all into account, you can see that the jack and power supply placement on the pedal is really important, as is the profile of the patch cables that you're planning to use. So for this build, I've actually tried to stick with top mounted jacks and power supplies. The third question you need to ask yourself is what do you want on the board? Plan it out on paper. There are online tools that you can use to um, select the exact pedal types and you know see what fits where but again those won't necessarily give you an indication of the jack placement so just be aware of that um, but I would just write down what you want in terms of tuner how many gain stages do you want do you want a fuzz pedal or not how many modulation pedals do you want and then I would look at time-based stuff like delays and reverb last None of this is gonna go into the effects loop. So I'm just gonna go straight into the front of my amp with this board. I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. Next up, I would recommend laying the pedals out just on the carpet or on a table and plugging in the um, patch cables and the power supplies just so you can make sure what the overall sort of uh, width is gonna take up, okay? Now this is the fun bit, especially if you have too many pedals to fit on your board. You're gonna to have to make some decisions um, so you can start swapping stuff out and kind of get a little bit creative. Maybe you turn a pedal on its side and that gives you a little bit more room. And the next point is incredibly important, but very boring and potentially one that you could overlook. So don't do this. Make sure that before you go out and buy a power supply that you know all of the power ratings for the pedals that you're planning to use because they are all different. Some will draw as much as 250, maybe 500 milliamps. 
Others may, you know, only take sort of 20 or, or less. So let's take a look at the mono power supplies as an example, right? This is the small power supply. If you can see that. So we have five inputs there. All of them are nine volt. That's another consideration because you may have nine, 12, 18 volt pedals. And if you look on the top there, you can see the amount of power that you can get out of these suckers. You've got 500 there, 150, 150, 100 and 100, right? This may be all you need because you can daisy chain. If you don't have any really, really power hungry pedals, you can just get a daisy chain off one of these and have that power several pedals. You know, you may be able to power enough from just that one socket there, right? But this gives you a little option. Now for the large power supply, this bad boy has 10 inputs. So starting from here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and they're all 500 milliamps each, right? This one here allows you to actually daisy chain and connect another one of these suckers. So if you do need to expand it, you can, which is a really nice feature. And if you see these little switches on these three ones, you can select either 9, 12 or 18 volts for these three here, which is really, really handy. So just make sure that the power supply you buy is the right one for your needs. Time to check out how it sounds. So the clean tone. Then if we add a little bit of light speed with that drive set in the middle. Just a little bit of bite, isn't there, you know? Bit of reverb. Now the 91 with both gain at zero kind of I rolled the volume off a little bit there on the guitar. So that's quite a lot of gain, even though it's only set on zero, right? But the light speed gives me something in between my clean tone and that. I mean, you'd get uh, the light speed. I mean, that's awesome with the 91. So, you know, light speed I'd be using for Frusciante sort of stuff. Turn the reverb off there. Obviously, the night one's going to cover all my pill jam needs. All that good stuff, you know. Also great for later Foo Fighters stuff, I find. Cranks we've got. If we go over to the uh, menace, then. Much more high gain, isn't it? And 
that's got a noise gate. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be all out like that. I mean, you've got... <laughs> then over to the mother load, where we've got obviously the rat and the muff. So this is the muff. If you go over to the rat side, um, let you know my hero, stuff like that. Also combine the uh, EQ, which gives you another whole set of tones too. Um, so like I choose me, third secret's always a good one. So gain tones galore. And modulation, I've got um, chorus, Tremolo, phaser, and flanger are the ones I've gone for. So we have uh, the chorus is the jellyfish. Um, kind of a small clone, clone, but it's got a bunch of other bits and pieces on it, which I really like. I mean, Nirvana stuff. Yeah, it'll do that all day long. Um, you know, you've got some print stuff in there. That's great. I mean, I'm not dialing in the tones, obviously, exactly right. Now, the um, Harmonious Monk uh, version 2, this is, is amazing. I just wanted it on the board. I mean, it'll do the trem stuff, but it does all this sort of cool pulsy stuff too. Audio Lillian Phaser. Great for all the sort of smashing pumpkin stuff and beyond. And all that. I wasn't sure about the um, flanger, but the this Cross device's airborne flange is just insanely good. Does that sort of negative flanging thing as well, like that. That's uh, normal flanging. Great stuff, isn't it? And it's also got a really cool feature that I like for one of Mike's solos. Which is great little temporary speed up of that um, and we've got the delay come for the boss uh, dd200 it's got a ton of stuff in it and then the cloak which also has a shimmer refib on it too which i really love So there you have it, my grunge pedal board version 2. Hope you enjoyed the vid. See you again soon.